watch us fly like Delta engines. Man, we been up missing when these laws they been to fit you. I got so much time to dress it towards any law official. Yeah, say we not the people or any artificial that conjured up an image that is contrary to the scriptures. All their feet like polished brass, lightning bolts coming from his business. You can approach the throne, but not until I extend the golden scepter. That's right, stay in line. Watch me handle mine. How you doing, man? How you doing? So, so what are you basically going over is right as far as as far as who we are in the Bible. I don't know if you asked you that, but if I was to ask you your race, what would you say? A race, Leon? Yes, man. You're a black American. Black American, right? So, the church that you've been attending, right? Is it safe to say you've been going there for some years? Yeah. Like how how long you been going? I'm going there, like ten plus years, right? So. That's supposed to be a place of learning, right? Okay. So when you go there, you're supposed to be learning about God, right? right? The first thing that we as a people are supposed to know is where do we fit in that in the Bible, right? right? So in church, do they tell us where we fit in it in the Bible? No. They don't, right? No. So that's supposed to be the basis, and they're not teaching us that. So they starting out wrong already. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? So I want to show you who you are in the Bible real quick with a couple of scriptures. Go to that Deuteronomy 28, 29 and 1. Because he, he brought out about God uh, choosing Israel, right? right. When you look at this sign right here, right? When you look at this sign. You see the 12 tribes of Israel. On this side is the names that are in the Bible. Can I, can I take a picture? Yes, yes, man. You can take a picture. So I can read it. Oh. Okay. So, so on, on, on my right side is what the Bible says. But on the other side is what society calls us, right? The people that colonized, the people that colonized these people, yes. named them African American, uh, West Indian, Black, Haitian, Puerto Rican, yes. Mexican. The people that colonized, that took everything from them, they gave them those names, right? right. Because even the name African American, yes. it was it was made up by Jesse Jackson, but he had to get it approved by the same people that colonized us, right? Okay. So watch this. Read that. Deuteronomy twenty nine and one. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 29, verse 1. These are the words of the covenant. So do you know what a covenant is? No, tell me. A covenant is an agreement. Okay. So if I say, I'm going to enter into a covenant with you, you're going to pay me $50 every week to mow your yard, right? Okay. That's the agreement that we got. And if I don't cut your grass, I don't get paid, right? But if I cut it, I get paid. Right. That's what it's talking about. So read that again. These are the words of the covenant. So it says, these, this Bible are the words of that agreement, read. Which the Lord commanded Moses. So you know Moses, right? The Lord gave this word to Moses and told him to do what with? To make with the children of Israel. So who did God tell Moses to make this agreement with? Israel. The children of Israel, right? Right, right? So notice, he didn't say anybody else. He didn't say so-called white people, which are Edomites. He didn't say the Ishmaelites. He didn't say the East Indians. He didn't say... uh. Uh, nobody else. He only said the children of Israel, right? So skip back to Deuteronomy 28, verse 15. This is what would happen if they broke that agreement. Read. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 15. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe, to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day. So if we didn't keep that agreement, what God would do? That all the these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. So God told the children of Israel, if they didn't keep this agreement, that he would curse them. Right? So let's read a curse that happened to them, and I want you to see who they were lined up with. Read verse 37. Verse 37. And thou shalt become an astonishment, a proverb, and a byword among all nations, whither the Lord shall lead thee. So the Bible just said that the children of Israel will become an astonishment. An astonishment means a great amazement. So when you when the children of Israel get as far as okay, an astonishment, right? What other race of people get strange looks about them? Whether 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 it is is walking into a store, walking into a businesses, what race of people get a strange look like? Like I don't, I don't know about him. We get that look, right? Yeah. So it says an astonishment, and what else? A proverb. A proverb is a wise saying. 
CP time, color people time, black people like chicken, right. watermelon, right. uh, those type of uh, uh, things they say about us, right? Read. And a byword. So the Bible says a byword. A byword is being called something other than what God called you. Because you said black African American. You're, you're not this color. Black is just a color, it's not a race. African American, like I said, what year were you born? I guarantee you, African American is not on your birth certificate. Right. Because that term was was coined in, in the mid '80s. Right. My mother was born in '55, and her birth certificate say Negro. Right. So, if her say Negro, but mine say African American because I was born in '90. But we the same people. So how do we got two different names as far as the race on our birth certificate? That's what God is saying. What happened to the children of Israel? Bring it up. You see that? Yeah. Read on. Among, among all nations, whither the Lord shall lead thee. So the brother brought out slavery. When you look at these slave routes, they put us on the slave ship. They shipped us from the west coast of Africa. Just so happened, our boat stopped in Mississippi. <laughs> they, they shipped us up the Mississippi River, yeah. and, they, and, 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 and they dispersed us like that. Yeah. And we end up in the cotton field, picking all these crops right for free, right? right. That happened to us. Yeah. So read verse 64. I'm going to show you about the church now. Read that. Verse 64. And the Lord shall scatter thee among all people. Going back to what I was saying, how we were scattered. Read. I, I, I want you to hear this part. From the one end of the earth, even into the other. Go ahead. And there. And there. There. When we got right here to America, yeah. just so happened we in Vicksburg, yeah. on front of Mississippi Delta, yeah. what would happen? And there. Thou shalt serve other gods. Did you just hear what God said? God said when you got here to Mississippi, you wouldn't even know me. God said you would not know me when you got to this side of the earth. You see that? Watch this. Read on. Which neither, which neither thou nor thy fathers have known. So, Matthew, Luke, Mark, Paul, did they know anything about a Baptist church? No. What about a Pentecostal or Lutheran, Seventh Day Adventist, Jehovah Witness? Did they know anything about that? They didn't. So guess what? That's God telling us that we will serve other gods when we got to this side of the earth. That's right. How will we serve those gods? Read on. Even wood and stone. So he named the two biggest that we will be in. Uh, Islam and Christianity. The white image of Caesar the boat. That's the man who God says. That's the man who God said majority of our people will be following. Because the world will worship that image. Did you know that? Because, because you were saying that God loved everybody, right? So, do God love the people that did this to us? Because God is a just God, right? You believe you, 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 you get back what you put out? Right. Name me something good so-called white people have done to black people. Name me something. Nothing. So, what can they expect good from God? And there you go. Bring it up. Showing you what? That God don't love everybody. God only love because you got children, right? Yeah. Right. When, when, when your children act up, right, you punish them, right? Yeah. Slavery was punished from God because Bring it God up. is our father. Notice, notice every other race they sin, right? They do evil. So why didn't the evil happen to them? Why does the evil ever happen to the so-called Arab man? The so-called East Indian man, but they prosper in our neighborhood. They do evil. You mean to tell me ain't nothing bad happening to them? 
So-called white people, they took the whole world. So-called white people killed over 100 million Native American Indians and took this land from them. Bring it out. And then they came and got our forefathers from the West Coast of Africa, and they brought us over here, and they went to killing us by the million. Mm -hmm. So you mean tell me God loved them? No. God don't love them. Yeah. God only loved us because who God loved, he punished. Oh, Give me that Amos 3. Bring it out. Watch this. The book of Amos, chapter 3, verse 1. Hear these words that the Lord has spoken against you, O children of Israel. You see how the Bible keep going to the children of Israel? Yeah. Yeah. So he's talking to us. He wants you to hear something. Read. Against the whole family which I brought up from the land of Egypt. Sing. The whole family that God brought out of Egypt, that he kept them Egyptians for. Watch what God say. Saying, you only have I known of all the families of the earth. What did God just say? He said, you the only family that I know out of all the ones that he ever made. Because God created everybody, but he only deals with us. Right. These are the things that they don't teach you in church. The church system was set up by that race right there. Bring it and out. Every, and every community you go in, and, and we got those churches in our community, as soon as you step outside of those doors, how does that community look? It looks hard. It looks hard. You, you go around Vicksburg. You got the church to be the nicest thing on the block, but you go outside of it, you got drug dealing. Right. You got prostitution. Right. You got murder. You got right. crime. You got all that right outside those doors. So what are they teaching our people in there? They teaching us to hate themselves and love them. Bring it up. Bring it on. Therefore, I will punish you for all your iniquities. You see what God said? God said he will punish us for our sins. So guess what we got to do to come back and love God? 1 John 5 and 3. I'm going to show you how to get back on the right track. Because you would say, you, you, of course you would say you love God, right? But God has conditions on how you love them. And if you don't do those conditions, it shows that you do not love God. And I'm going to show you. Read that. The book of 1 John, chapter 5, verse 3. For this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments. So the love of God is you keeping his commandments. Mm -hmm. You can't go see God on, 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 a, on a Sunday morning. You can't send him a text. You can't send him some flowers. You can't do none of that. God said, you say you love me, you got to keep my commandments. Watch this. Read on. And his commandments are not grievous. Meaning his commandments are not hard to do. Right? Do run 2 and 2 and 5. Bring it out. So God's commandments aren't hard to do. And I'm going to show you a commandment as pertaining to women. Right? Mm -hmm. Read. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 22, verse 5. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. So the Bible says a woman shall not wear what belongs to men. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. So what is what is something women wear outside that men shouldn't have on outside? As far as clothes. A dress. A dress, right? Mm -hmm. So a man shouldn't wear a dress. Read it, read over. The woman shall not wear that which pertaining unto a man. So what belongs to men that women shouldn't wear? Hands. Hands, right? Read on. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. For all that do so. So everybody who does this, this is how God feels about them. Or abomination unto the Lord thy God. So now my question is, do you want to be an abomination to God? I want to do what's right. Yeah. So what you have to do? I guess I have to get out these pants. There you go. All praise. All, praise. all praise because that shows that shows because we read the scripture a lot and a lot of, and a lot of people they just don't vibe with it. But when you're sincere about trying to find God and see how to love God, you would be like you just did. You're like, okay, I got, I got to get out of these pants because yeah. obviously you, you may have not known it. Yeah. You know. I was wondering. I got a best friend. That's all she wears, is dress. And I'm, I was wondering why her and her mom and sisters and were wearing it. Okay, so, okay. So, that's so, why. so we got the dress, right? Yeah. So it's something that you got to put on that dress. That? I'm gonna show you. Numbers 15, uh, 38. Bring it up. The book, the book of Numbers. Chapter 15, verse 38. Speak unto the children of Israel and bid them that they make them fringes in the borders of their garments. So what you got to put on that dress, God says fringes. Do you know what fringes are? Tell me what that is. These are fringes. Oh, okay. Right. You, you can get them from like Hobby Lobby or, or Joanne's. You can even order them online. So these are fringes right here. 
You see, we got them on, 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 I got on my t-shirt and I got on my, my uh, outer shirt. Read on. But fringes is on the borders of their garments throughout their generation. So God says, as long as you have kids, your kids, kids supposed to have these on. And guess what? They serve a purpose, and I'm going to show you the purpose. Right. Read. And that they put upon the fringe of the borders a ribbon of blue. So the Bible said, not only do you got to put the fringes on, you got to put a ribbon of blue over it. You see that? Yeah. So like whether it's dark blue or lighter blue like that, as long as it's blue, God said you got to have these on your garment. So with a dress, you got to have the fringes and the border blue on your dress also. Read. And it shall be unto you for a fringe that ye may look upon it and remember all the commandments of the Lord and do them. You see the purpose of the fringes? It says you got to look upon them and remember, oh, I got to keep the commandments of God. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not steal. Uh, uh, keep the Sabbath. Uh, have, no other, have no other God before the Most High God. That's the purpose of the fringes. You see what I'm saying? So, because when we do these things, it reminds us to keep the commandments like the Bible say. Oh!